Here's how split genes are transcribed into pre-messenger RNAs and how a pre-messenger RNA is processed to make a mature mRNA with a single undivided coding region. After transcription of the pre-message, complete with all the introns and exons, the introns are removed by splicing, a process analogous to how film directors cut out unwanted parts of a movie and splice together the scenes that will be in the final production. After cloning many split genes and studying their intron-exon structure, it turns out that there's not much to the structure of an intron to explain how it's removed from the pre-mRNA. The five prime end of most introns begins with the base's GU, a GU dimer, called the five prime splice site, because during splicing, the G is hydrolyzed from the end of the exon at the left. The three prime end of the intron is an AG dimer. Again, during splicing, hydrolysis separates the intron from the second exon after the G. One of the many adenine nucleotides within the intron, one usually closer to the three prime end than the five prime end of the intron, is important as a branch site that is used in splicing although it's not clear why any particular A serves this function. Splicing itself is catalyzed by a group of small ribonucleoproteins, small particles made up of RNA and protein, found in the nucleus, called SNRPs for short, or SNRNPs. Here's how they work. First, SNRNP U1 and U2 bind to the 5' prime splice site and to the adenine at the branch site, respectively. Then U4 and U6 associate with U2 at the branch site. After U5 SNRNP binds at the branch, the 5 and 3' prime splice sites are brought close together in a structure called the spliceosome. The next step is cleavage of the 5' prime splice junction and the formation of a bond between the 5' prime G of the intron with the branch site adenine nucleotide to form a lariat-like structure shown here. This is followed by the hydrolysis of the 3' prime splice site and the release of the lariat, concurrent with the ligation or splicing of the exons. Upon completion of splicing, the spliceosome disassembles and the SNRNPs can be reused to splice again.